So on your Thinkorswim phone app, you will start off in the overview section, which will look like this, and it'll just show your current position. Since it's the weekend, I definitely am not holding anything, so we're going to move over to watch list. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see these different tabs we're moving through, and if it's highlighted green, that's what we're currently on. In order to edit your watch list, you're going to click the pencil button, and that'll bring you up to a search box where you can see my current watch list is. If you want to delete something, you just hit the negative button to delete it. If you want to add it back, you search for it, and then you're going to hit the green plus button to add it back to your watch list. This is a great way if you work a full-time job to keep yourself super organized and focused only on the stocks that you are currently trading that day or week. And if you move it over to the side, you can see all the data that's included. If you want to alter that data or get rid of some stuff, hit the little gear icon and then you can flip through and add things or get rid of them just to simplify the interface. Same thing, so hit the negative to delete. If you want to add something back, just search for it. And once you find whatever you're looking for, hit the positive button. You can also go more in depth and search through categories and add and delete anything that you feel is necessary. But for me, I like to keep a clean interface and most of the indicators and things like that that I'm using, you guys know I do that on my desktop and then it just transfers over to your phone. So next up, when it comes to placing a trade, there's multiple ways to do that. You can actually place a trade from your watch list just by clicking on the stock ticker that you want to trade. So we clicked on SPY and you can see we are now looking at SPY chart. You can change the time frames, five day, five minute, one day, one minute, whatever you like. You can switch over to news. Options chain is right here. You'll most likely spend most of your time in here if you're an options trader. And then you have level two at the end, which I really don't use that much to be completely honest. I just mainly reside in chart and options tab. So back to the chart tab, if you want to clean up things, so let's say you've done some drawings on your computer and you want to get rid of them, just click and hold until that highlighted portion pops up, click the X arrow and you can get rid of trend lines, tap on your screen and then this little sidebar will pop up and you can redraw the trend line if you want. So just hit new trend line and then you just tap one spot and then tap the other spot and then you can move it around to where your trend line looks the best and there you go you can quickly draw a trend line from your phone so now let's say that you want to get rid of all of this stuff on your chart it's just too overwhelming it's too much clutter you hit the sidebar you hit the little eyeball and then you unclick drawings it'll get rid of drawings you unclick studies it'll get rid of your fib levels and you have a much cleaner chart to look at now you can flip through different time frames you can go from the five day five minute if you want to go to a bigger picture point of view you can do that as well like i said this is very helpful if things are just looking a little too cluttered and you're not able to clearly see the bigger picture maybe bigger trends developing etc and you can go back once you're on the larger time frame and then turn back on whatever you want so if you want the fibs back on and that's it all your drawings are gone and just your fibs are on that chart. It's really easy to switch back and forth. Next up, if you want to add indicators, click the little beaker on the left-hand side and it'll pull up this page. You guys can see that I already have my moving averages, which are my staple EMAs. Click on to edit. But if you need to add or delete, you can do that from this page using the minus and plus buttons, just like we did with the watch list. So we are back on the chart and we're on the 20 day, one hour for SPY, just kind of observing what larger patterns look like. But if you want to trade from this page, you just hit the buy or sell button up top. So if you're looking to buy shares, you could hit the buy button and that'll bring up SPY shares. Now, if you want to trade options, you need to do something different. You have to go from the chart to the options tab to trade options on SPY. Now, if you scroll down, you can see the options chain. However, I have way too many options, literally, when it comes to strike price. So if I want to clean that up, click strikes, and you can change that from 25 to 10, which gives you a much more simple and cleaner interface when you're scrolling through the different expiration weeks, and it's just much easier to sort through. So the options chain itself, on the left, you have calls, on the right, you have puts. And if you scroll side to side on the actual options chain, you see you have bid, ask, last, and that's pretty much it. And then the strike price is in the middle. So let's say that you wanted to add something to these columns, like maybe volume or open interest. Go to the little gear icon in the middle there between calls and puts. And just like before, that'll bring up a list where you can minus or add anything you would like to change in regards to the layout. So for me, I would most likely scroll down until I found volume and then I'd add that in. It's usually at the very bottom. Just hit the plus button once you find what you're looking for and then boom, you have now added volume to your options layout and options chain so you can see when i tell you only trade option contracts with high volume you can now see that from your phone so now let's go through a practice trade you're going to scroll up and you're going to go from options to chart because you need to analyze the chart to figure out what strike price you're going to pick let's say that you look at the larger time frame on the 20 day and you're noticing that we are looking like we might break trend here so you go draw your trend line you hit new trend line and then we're going to draw 
a basic trend line from the top there to the bottom here just to show us where we broke out and you can see we already broke out and we're heading towards the next fib so let's say that you're looking to stay long aka by calls as long as we hold over the trend line and that micro range and you're looking for a break of that fib so you're going to go down and let's just look at the 397 call so you click the 397 section and this brings up the order tab for the 397 calls on spy always double check what contract you're looking at c is for calls p is for puts expiration and strike details will all be at the top there next always double check your quantity when it comes to the amount of option contracts you're about to buy you can see I just changed that by going negative or positive you can always switch the arrows over top of those numbers to change from limit to stop to market I always do limit order personally and I recommend that especially with option contracts because you don't want to get a crazy fill if you have a wide bid and ask speaking of bid and ask you can see that by scrolling over right there on the top you can see bid is 153 ask is 155 so for example if I wanted to make sure I got in that trade I would probably just go ahead and go for the ask at 155 once everything looks good, let's just say I wanted to buy those five call contracts on SPY, you go up to the top right hand corner where it says review. Once you hit the button review, it will let you actually review your order before you submit it. Take your time reviewing this page. What is your max profit? Infinite. What is your max loss? $775, which is what it costs to be in this trade. You can also see commission at the bottom is $250 for this trade. So yes, Thinkorswim does charge commissions for contracts. So make sure you're keeping track of that and not buying too many bulk contracts because those fees and commissions will really add up. So now let's say that you bought five contracts and now you want to sell five contracts. You just just switch the buy to the sell button if you're buying five calls to exit those you need to just sell five calls make sure you're not doing anything different there if you buy five puts you need to sell five puts so if you want to set a stop loss instead of you're just trying to sell right away let's say you buy five and now you want to set a five stop loss you just go to sell toggle over to stop and then change your stop price to what you want your risk level to be so if you only want to be risking 145 meaning you bought them at 155 you're risking ten dollars per contract if you have a stop loss at 145. the flip side of that let's say instead of setting a stop loss now you want to set a sell limit at a higher price meaning you bought them at 155 and you want to sell them for a profit at 185 without having to pay attention to your phone so then you just go sell limit order and then you can change the limit price to whatever you would like to sell them for in this case we said 185 so that means if the contracts reach a 185 price per contract your order will execute and your five contracts will sell for a profit okay back to the bar at the bottom where it says overview we're currently on watch list now let's go to the trade tab which is just another way for you to make a trade on your phone there's several different ways go to the search tab type in whatever ticker you want then you can see the chart where we already have been now let's go to positions positions is where you will monitor what trades you are currently in or have been throughout the day this is where i am at a ton during the day is my positions tab because i often trade from this or at least monitor my positions my pnl all that good stuff if you go to more you can see orders alerts if you want to edit an order you just go to orders and you can cancel it or modify it from there so let's say you had a stop or a limit whatever and then you can go edit your orders from here it's the weekend i don't have any orders no positions next up is alerts you need to understand how to set alerts so let's go do that so like everything else there's multiple ways to set alerts you can do it from this tab you can create a custom alert but me personally i like to go do it on the chart itself so we're going to go back and find a chart like spot and in the right hand corner next to that little square with an arrow there is a bell with a plus sign you click that to set alerts so now you should see you have alert trigger threshold so alert means last price i leave that the same but things that i will change is threshold so the price that i want it to alert at and then above that the trigger do i want it to be above that or below that so if it's below i'm waiting for it to drop below that price to be alerted if it's greater than i'm waiting for the price to go above that threshold to be alerted for example if you go back to the chart and you look at spy on a larger time frame so you change the five day five minute and you go to something like the 10 day 30 minute just to get a bigger picture point of view you zoom out by just squeezing the screen with your fingers and let's just say that you want to get alerted you're long and you're like when it goes underneath 395 27 near there i want to be alerted i want to know if it's starting to form a downtrend so you just go create an alert and then you would change the trigger 
to less than, and then you would change the threshold to the price that you were referring to, 395.27 exactly. So you would just create alert, alert was created, go back to the chart, and you can now see your alert on the chart. And lastly, to cancel that alert, you just click on that blue box slash line and it'll pop up an edit screen. You just hit cancel alert. It'll prompt you to say yes or no at the bottom. Once you hit yes, your order will be completed, aka the alert was canceled. And there you go. That pretty much sums it up for the app. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys. If you have any other questions, make sure to post those in study group.